everybody. Thanks for joining us again on Realty Check. I'm your host, Trish Williams. We're in our series right now where we're talking about a home purchase from start to finish and all the things that happen during that process. Uh, last week, we discussed uh, HOAs and we, we've been talking about contingencies, different things that come up. If the home is in an HOA, one of those things that happens is you get your HOA package with the rules and regulations. So we discussed that a little bit, pros and cons, things to look out for. Before that, we were talking about home inspections and that 10-day due diligence contingency where you do your inspections and uh, investigate all the things that are important to you. And this week, we are going to be talking about appraisals. What is an appraisal and how it affects the, the whole process, how they find value, all of the questions and answers on what happens during an appraisal. So with that, we have our guest, our returning guest, Gregory Cook with Castle & Cook Mortgage to talk to us about what happens during an appraisal and, and, and all, all the questions that people could have. Wonderful. Good morning, Trish. Good to see you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us again, Greg. Thank you. Um, so, Greg, let's start off with the basics. What Thanks. is an appraisal? Great. So an appraisal is when you have a educated buyer and educated seller that agree on a purchase price, a third-party appraiser comes in to substantiate and review that appraise that value on behalf of the bank really okay yes. on behalf of the bank or if if so if somebody is buying cash they can still have an appraisal yes of they can uh, still get an appraisal if they're buying cash because they want to know the value yes okay perfect so it's not just finance but we see it most often yes. on finance purchases yeah. yeah sometimes people will do them for divorce cases for uh, for settlement cases uh, yeah there's other there's other times when it's used uh, death appraise death on death of, of value appraisal, that sort of thing. So there are other cases, yes. Okay, yeah. great. Now, why why is an appraisal important? Great, so uh, it's, uh, again, traditionally it's uh, to protect the lender to make sure the value is there. So um, the lender wants to make sure that their, their loan, their buyer is not overpaying for the value of a property. So ultimately, as you know, the bank owns that loan. They're the one that's really on the hook, whether you're putting down 3% or 50%. They own the remaining of that loan. They want to make sure that you're not overpaying. Um, it, you know, 90% of its value, a little bit is, you know, condition of the property. It's not a home inspection, but a little bit the condition of the property, but it's there to protect the value. Absolutely. Um, my early days in real estate, it, I, I heard a lot of like the appraisals, the protection for the buyer. And as I got to learn a little bit more about, uh, you yes. know, the process, I was like, you know, it's really yep. not to protect the buyer. It, yep. The bank is make, makes it mandatory to protect their investment. If the buyer stops paying, they want to make sure that they have an investment that they Absolutely. can sell. Yep, that it's, not, that it's uh, close to value point there, that if something happens in the future, that they, they know what they're buying. Yep. Yes, absolutely. So um, is it mandatory? Um, nine and a half out of 10 times, it is mandatory. Um, there is a, uh, there's a situation where if you have a very strong buyer, uh, you know, very strong credit, large down payment, and then the value is there, lenders have a way of putting it into the software, whether it's desktop underwriter for Fannie Mae or loan prospector for Freddie Mac. Um, even before they've sent out loan disclosures, they can put it into the system, run that DU or LP, and if the appraisal comes in and it's a little green check mark and it always makes us happy when we see it, a little green check mark that says appraisal waiver, it can happen on a purchase. And that's before going into even into an accepted offer that you can get a value check on that. Okay, great. Yeah. So, but we're, again, we're talking very strong buyer, um, traditionally larger down payments and a valuation because the software has, Fannie Mae has their own metrics. It has a way of them kind of determining value. It goes much beyond what a Zillow does or something like that. And it, it does a value substantiation and you can get an appraisal waiver. Okay. Now you don't know that until we're actually in contract on the property. So like when wait, when you're writing the offer, if the buyer's writing the offer and they say, oh, I want to waive the appraisal, they have no way of guaranteeing that they're going to get that appraisal waiver until we're actually in contract on the property. You actually don't need to be in contract. Really? Right. So um, if, uh, if you're making an offer and you want to, you know, you have that time, you know, whatever, four or five hours, let your lender know and say, um, we'd like to see if we get an appraisal waiver here. And, uh, and we, we can put it into the software and, and run that. 
Um, most of us lenders experience ones, we kind of know what's going to happen or not. Again, you're not going to get it in your FHA, government, uh, <laughs> VA. Um, but uh, on your Freddie Max, Fannie Mae's, if it's a large enough down payment, we'll put it into software and see if you can get an appraisal waiver. Um, again, they're not common, but it does happen. Okay, yeah. yeah. And we see, so one of the things that I'm seeing a lot in this market is on many offers, um, more than not, buyers are waiving appraisals. That doesn't mean that they have an appraisal waiver. That just means they're running the, they're, they're going to write it out and see if it all works out and be willing to pay the difference if it doesn't, correct? Absolutely correct. Their, their realtor would have advised, hey, I think the value is going to come in within this ballpark range. They may have a large enough down payment that they can, uh, that they're comfortable waiving that appraisal. And if it comes in short, that they can, that they can make up the difference. They can cover the difference, right. right. So what if there's some cases where sellers may have an appraisal? Maybe they did a refinance a few months prior to listing and they still have that appraisal in hand, or they were in contract once with another buyer and that um, they have the appraisal from the previous buyer and something didn't work out, you know, something unraveled and they still have that appraisal. Is there a way of, um, of the new buyer using the old appraisal? So if the appraisal belonged to the seller and the seller did it, whether it was for a refinance or they did a predetermining appraisal, um, then no, that's not going to be able to be used because uh, one, if it was for the refinance, that's a, a little bit different set of metrics. And if they did it for their own knowledge, uh, there's not a loan attached to that. And again, it's a little bit different metrics. So that one you cannot use. If it came from the previous buyer and if it's in, within a certain time frame, then again, the appraisals have, they have a rating and it's one through five. And if it has a, uh, a strong enough rating, then most lenders will accept that appraisal to be transferred. Um, and sometimes they won't. Um, FHA appraisals can be transferred and VA appraisals can be transferred. Okay. So, yes. So back to FHA and VA appraisals. Now there's, if, if a buyer, if a seller is selling a home mm -hmm. and it has an FHA appraisal yes. and just to throw numbers out there, say the home is listed at 400, mm -hmm. FHA appraisal comes in at 390. Mm -hmm. Through something else through the escrow, something unravels, they never close with that buyer. Yes. That appraisal, if they go into contract with another FHA buyer, that appraisal sticks to the property. They can't get a new FHA appraisal for a certain amount of time, correct? Correct, yep. So uh, the way FHA works, there's an FHA portal and, uh, and so there's an FHA case number attached to that appraisal, which is attached to that house. And if you have a new buyer that comes in within 120 days, then you have to get, uh, you have to use that appraisal. Okay. So they cannot have a different appraised value on the same loan type within 120 days. Correct. Does Correct. the same work for VA? Uh, you, it, it, it does not. You do not have to use that appraisal, but you can. VA does allow you to order another appraisal. Okay, so it doesn't stick to the property like an FHA does. Uh, it, it does, but VA actually allows you to get another appraisal. So we can see that there was another appraisal done, but F VA allows you to order another appraisal. Okay, yep. and now back to that same scenario. Sellers selling a house for 400000 They mm -hmm. have an FHA buyer, comes in at three ninety. They can't come to terms, buyer cancels, they're back on the market, and they choose to accept another offer at 400,000, mm -hmm. even though it appraised previously with FHA at 390, they accept another offer at 4,000 that's conventional or VA. That FHA appraisal is not gonna pop up to haunt them? Uh, FHA will not affect a conventional appraisal. The lender won't see it. They have no reason to look at it. And the same thing with VA, they won't see it. They have no reason to look at it. Okay. Um, so if it's a different loan type. It's a different loan type, they have no reason to, to consider it. You would need another appraisal anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, so no, they have no reason to consider it. Now, is there a reason why, and, and I, I know the answer to this, I'm just asking, yeah. but um, is there a reason why different loan types could have different appraised values? Is it, does it really have anything to do with the loan type or does it have to do with the appraisers? It has to do with the appraiser. It's, it's, a, it's a common misconception that, uh, that, um, that theoretically the FHA would come in any different than a, a conventional loan or a VA loan. Um, uh, they're all the same appraisers these days. I mean, you do have to have a special appraisal license for FHA and another one for VA, um, the, they're the same people. Uh, so 
uh, some of the biggest appraisers in town. They they can do FHA conventional and, and FHA conventional VA. So the value isn't really there. What I normally see is that it's more determination on the condition of the property where FHA can be a little more conservative and VA can be a little more conservative. But what I've really seen that's more, you know, houses built before 1980 and, uh, and then you get that dreaded subject to the value. But as far as value determinations, no, they're, they're really not looking at it in any different guise. When it comes down to it, they have every appraisal report has comparable properties. Um, my, my take on it is that the appraisers have it, that they make their informed opinion of value right. and that might vary between appraisers. That's Absolutely. why sometimes you see appraisals come in different, but I usually typically do not see a huge variance. Every once in a while you'll get something yep. that, that that's odd. Um, I mean, there's, there's times that I get appraisals that I look at it and I'm like, that's not even a right. comp. Like, how? Right. where'd that come from? Yep. Um, but there's, for the most part, generally, they're all typically within the same ballpark because they're all using the same criteria right. for the comparables that they're using to determine value. Sure, they're human beings, you know, and, uh, you know, they're, they're using their skill set. Uh, the only thing I would say is uh, sometimes when you see these big variances, I've seen it where uh, appraisers are coming in from out of market. You know, I've, we've had appraisers, yeah. you know, um, on deals, uh, I'll say this, not ours, because we, we have an appraisal pool that's completely local. But uh, when you're using sometimes these big national lenders and mm -hmm. they have an appraisal pool and they'll allow several hundred in their appraisal pool, I've had appraisers coming in from Tempe, from Phoenix, uh, um, from Mesquite, which is closer, but still they don't know the market. And you're like, what did you do? And then the skill set of experience, you know. Right. I know we had an appraisal, or you had an appraisal a while ago, an, uh, uh, an appraisal that was only in for a year. No, he wasn't even in for a year. He was in for four months. He had just got his appraisal license. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I got this appraisal that came in. It was on a brand new, brand new home, yep. brand new construction, um, everything. I mean, there's so much that you can get into when you talk about brand new homes, energy efficiency, mm -hmm. the extra, um, you know, the extra insulation, the, there's so much more that they're doing with homes right yep. now. Mm -hmm. And on the comparables list, there were literally homes from like the seventies that had popcorn ceilings that he was calling comparables. Yeah. And I, I tried to dispute it. He stuck by it. It was, you know, it was a challenge, but I don't even see how that could possibly be possible. Um, it's, it, but it was, it was an appraiser that had only been licensed for a few months. So, admittedly, an appraiser that probably needs to be reported so that they can be advised on doing things correctly because there's there's no excuse for using those type of comps. There, I, there's I, no excuse. I don't, I don't understand it. So, I know. Right. there's no excuse. It was they were comparables from an older neighborhood that was nearby. They were comparing it against a gated community. Those comparables weren't even in a gated community. Yeah. And the thing that drove me insane about it was there was three comparables in the same community. So yeah. there's no reason why they should have gone outside of it at all. Yeah. They added eight to the report for, for no reason. So Experience and how, how, unfortunately, maybe even a little bit of laziness in this, <laughs> this respect, why they didn't accept the dispute and, and, and look at it. So it should have been there. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Um, and then I've had other times where I've um, been in a dispute on an appraisal for something that I felt was justifiable to dispute. Mm -hmm. I don't dispute every appraisal. I mean, there's yep. times that they come in and I'm like, okay, we knew right. this was probably going to happen. Right. But there's other times that I've been in a situation with a dispute where I've had a great lender mm -hmm. that backed it, right. that backed the dispute. I feel like that is a game changer. If the lender will, will back it with you, then you're not just having the realtor because the appraisers are like, oh, all realtors right. are going to dispute yep. it. Um, but the lender backing that, if it's something justifiable, you de definitely have a better chance of yes. getting a review on it, of yep. getting a re-review. Yeah. Um, I don't necessarily the next question, but yes, appraisers, appraisals can be disputed um, and uh, reviewed. We've disputed VA, FHA, conventional, and... Uh, um, yeah, they, they definitely can be disputed. Yeah, yeah. It's not, it, it is an uphill battle. So if you are opening up a dispute, you definitely have to have some yeah. facts to back it because yeah. they're not going to take your, you know, I, yeah. <laughs> my counters are prettier than yeah. the other ones. Yeah. I mean, they want substantial evidence um, to even have a chance at success for a dispute because it's not easy to get a re-review. 
right. um, it, it is not. And uh, you definitely have to have your, your details if you're going to Absolutely. open that can of worms. Yep. Um, so back to the different loan types and appraisals. So there are certain things you mentioned conditions yes. subject to. So like sometimes an appraiser will go in, they'll do an appraisal. They'll say the value is fine, mm -hmm. but in order to give this value, there's a couple things that need to be done as far as repairs in the home. They're not doing a home inspection. So Correct. why do these repairs come up? What, what types of things do we see for that and why? Yeah, so you'll see these more often, say, on an FHA or VA, and the big ones, uh, the umbrella that everyone hears about is health and safety. Uh, so typically what they're looking for is um, broken windows, even cracked windows, uh, the locks broken on exterior door. It happens, you know, someone, they'll, they'll have never fixed that exterior door from the garage to the outside of the house, and, uh, you know, the lock is broken. Um, and so those are the overriding ones. Um, what we typically see, in, again, in the older homes is, you know, where the roof meets, uh, where it comes down, it's that, those are the eaves, I believe is what it's called. That, that wood that, that goes That wood, along. that fascia uh -huh. there. And on older homes, it can start getting dry rot and, and cracked. And they feel like that is something that could be a very large uh, cost to the buyer in the, in the near future. And they would be concerned that then the buyer is not gonna be able to have the money to fix it then there's a roofing problem, and then that may be a loan that's gonna come back because of the buyer didn't have the funds. So they'll want that to be fixed and repaired. Um, uh, garage, older wooden garage doors that are warped and cracked, same thing, anything substantial with roofing. And then big items like if inside they see water leaks in the ceilings, they'll determine to see if it's something that's present, if it's been fixed, or it's just, hey, it was a water leak from 10 years ago and they never repainted. Um, but uh, those are the big ones, the, the, the health and safety, right. um, pools that are not functioning, you know, somebody can walk not into filled, the, and yeah. not filled and then somebody can walk into the pool. Uh, those are the, the, the big ones that they're, they're kind of looking for. And again, it's more, it, it, it protects the consumer, but again, it's protecting the bank. What they want to make sure is, hey, the, the buyer's not going to have a large bill in the future. They're not going to be able to cover and then they're going to have to take this loan back. Absolutely. And then empty pools, obvious reason that somebody can fall into it. Absolutely. And, and one of the common things when we go into like smaller issues that we see all the time, if your water heater doesn't have straps. Oh, of course. That, yes. That, yeah. you know, it has to have those earthquake straps because yeah. we are in an earthquake valley. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> even though we don't know it or yeah. feel it every day, we are in an earthquake valley. Right. Those earthquake straps are important because that water heater could tip. Absolutely. Harm someone, destroy the house. Do there's a lot of things that can yeah, happen. The, the gas water heaters, and yeah, it could tip and it could actually ignite. So yes, oh yeah, absolutely. cause yeah. a fire. Yeah. Um, so that um, smoke alarms um, in older homes, yes. it was not code to put smoke alarms in all the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And now, if uh, you know, at the time of appraisal, the appraiser goes through and they don't see them in all the living areas where they're supposed to be, yep. they'll require smoke alarms to be installed. Which easy fix. I mean, right. they're they you can get them for under 50 bucks at, at Home Depot. They're yep, easy, absolutely. easy fixes. But those are typical things that we see commonly. GFIs sometimes. Yeah, yeah GFCIs yeah. or yeah. people that put doggy doors in your door leading to the garage. Right. Um, that's a fire rated door, so right. you're not supposed to do that. Right. Um, and sometimes they'll ask you to fix that if yeah. it's if, if you did, so. Openings in the ceilings in the garage, because again, the fire can, it's that, that drywall has a has a barrier that al doesn't allow fire to uh, to advance with I don't know what it's 45 minutes to an hour or something like that. And if you have an access, if it's open, they'll want that to be covered because then it can get into the attic very quickly and spread. So yeah, those are other things. Yeah, yeah. those are just common things yeah. we've seen. So they what happens there is they'll make that a uh, condition of fixing that mandatory in order for the appraised value to be supportive yes. of the purchase price, right. which essentially means you cannot close Correct. on the loan with this buyer yeah. unless those items are corrected. Yep. So the buyer and seller, usually the, the seller will just get a, a, a contractor out there to fix it, you know, to code to, and then the appraiser needs to go back out there. Sometimes pictures will suffice, but the appraiser needs to go back out there. They check off that the items have been removed. They'll update the appraisal and then it can clear underwriting. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So those are typical things we see happen there. Now, 
what happens if the value does not come in at our contract price? So again, like scenario I said before, yeah. we have a four hundred thousand dollar contract price mm -hmm. and an appraisal at three ninety. Can the buyer still get a loan for four hundred thousand? Uh, they cannot get a loan for four hundred thousand, but they can they can get a loan for the for the appraisal base on three ninety. Okay. So dollar for dollar, the buyer will need to come in with a variance between the appraisal price and between the purchase price. Okay. So in this case, we have a ten thousand dollar variance. Yes. At that point in time, it's a matter of negotiation. Yes, it's it's in the GLVR contract. Uh, it's three options. Option one, uh, seller just reduces the price and just easy enough, everyone goes on and denim is required. Uh, option number two is seller says no and cancel the contract. And then option number three is any form of variance in the $10,000. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be the full 10, obviously it can be split, three, seven, whatever. Yeah, seller and buyer all have to agree, but there's times that they could say, hey, I'll, I'll come up 5,000 if you drop 5,000 yep. and we're all happy and walk away that yep. way. Yep. Um, so there are ways that we can negotiate through that. But when it comes to the loan, if it does not appraise at value at, at the contract price, the appraisal comes in low, we, they cannot get the loan for that, um, that amount of the contract price. They can only get the loan for the amount of the appraised value. Correct amount of the appraisal. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. So we, we talked a little bit about how they determine value, comparables, mm -hmm. um, different things like that. Now, I, I don't, uh, this is, I guess, a misconception. While upgrades can have an effect on value, and yes. then there's certain big ticket items, you know, mm -hmm. third car garage, pools, things mm -hmm. like that, that do have a substantial effect on value. Yes. RV parking actually yep. has a great effect on value. Mm -hmm. um, remodels, having an updated home versus all original definitely has a, um, you know, a, a higher value, and we see that a lot on appraisals. Yes. But some of the things like, you know, I put new toilets through the house. Right. There's some there's some items that are, yes, you've updated them, yes, you've replaced them, but we don't really see those dollar amounts on the on, on the appraisal value differences. Is that, would you agree with that? Correct. Some some um, some of these are just updated items. It doesn't necessarily mean remodel. So appraisers uh, they uh, they'll grade a property and it's excellent, good, fair and poor and uh, there's um, pluses and minuses they can give for that, you know, what it is depending on what's been in there. So, you know, hey, my 1970 house has been remodeled. Well, no, it's been it's been upgraded or it's been just kept up to date with new carpeting or something like that. Now, if it's substantially nicer than, you know, the comps in the area, then you'll get that higher end. I mean, if it really is um, a remodel to an appraiser really means, you know, updated, fully updated kitchen, fully updated master, you know, okay, new tile and flooring, that type of thing. But, you know, hey, I, I changed the, the toilets and painted, you know, the interior of the house isn't going to get a lot of value. That's just going to be considered normal maintenance. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And I see that a lot too. Um, the, it, it really does have to be a high quality upgrade right. to get that, um, that higher appraisal over it. And mm -hmm. Even then, it's not dollar for dollar. Nope. You know, you put in a hundred thousand dollar pool, you're nope. not getting a hundred thousand dollars on that appraisal for it. No. Nope. Um, it it is not. It, it goes. They still run with the averages that they that are in the the area. Yeah, the big ones are uh, larger square footage to the property. If you added, obviously, and it has to be permitted upgraded square footage, um, balconies, even patios to a little bit of extent, um, larger lot sizes. Uh, and then, of course, all the, the, the interior items are not nearly quite as valuable as those things. And then view premiums are can it can extend the can improve the value quite a bit. Okay. Um, so it needs to be what's considered a forever view, meaning you're not going to have a house or apartment building that's going to be built right in front of your view. So, uh, but yeah, view premiums can go quite a ways. Yeah, yeah. it's funny. I um I, I've been to a lot of new builder, new construction communities lately. And uh, they've all, they all have this script. We can't sell a view. Yeah. So yeah. They, yeah. they cannot, they'll charge you more for the lots that are on yeah. that, that have a view. Yeah. Those lots are substantially higher, but they always reiterate they can't sell a view. Yeah. So yeah. That's, I, I find that um, kind of comical. Mm -hmm. um, so can the buyer or seller pick the appraiser? Uh, they cannot. Uh, definitely the seller cannot. Um, the, <laughs> um, the buyer really can't either. It's, it's more determined by the lender. So, um, 
what's very different from what happened, say, 10, 15 years ago, is now there's a, uh, a middle company. Uh, they're called AMCs, an appraisal management company. So theoretically, the lender doesn't even pick them because lenders can have different appraisal management companies they can use within that appraisal pool. Um, then there are appraisers, but no, you can't choose an AMC and say, by the way, I'd like to use John Smith. That you cannot do. Yeah, right. there there used to be, this was before my time, but there used to be a time when that was okay, I Oh, guess. absolutely, yep. Yeah. Um, direct communication between uh, lender and the appraiser, direct communication between listing agent and appraiser was very much the norm. And because of the real estate crash, um, I think un unfairly, a lot of the blame was put on appraisers. And so now they have uh, kind of a barrier in between. And that's why appraisal, the cost of an appraisal is now about 100 to $150 more. I mean, appraisal, an appraisal used to be three, 350, and now they pretty much start at 495. $545, and that's literally for that middle company to, to manage that. Okay. It, yeah. it keeps it fair. Yeah. It keeps it neutral. Yeah. It keeps it fair, unbiased. I understand. I yeah. understand the reason for that. Yeah. And what happens, um, can you, as a, as a listing agent or as a seller or even a buyer, if a buyer would want to, are they able to supply information to the appraiser? So say the home has solar and the solar is paid for and has warranty, all these things. There's things that the appraiser might not see when they walk through the house mm -hmm. that documentation we want to give to them so they understand that there could be value attached to that. Absolutely. Is it okay to supply them information? They are allowed to do that, um, absolutely. You can, uh, you can email it to the lender who can email it to the appraiser, um, to the AMC. Um, you can leave it at the house. Um, there is allowed, once, once the appraisal is ordered, there is allowed to be some type of communication. The only thing you can't do is supply those those uh, those upgrades, you know, with an envelope or hey, <laughs> you know, extra envelope of cash or you know, any type of uh, pressure to come in at value. Of course. Um, you know, hey, don't come into the property if you're not going to come on target. None of that stuff. But yes, you're, and you, you, we say this because it's all happened before. That Absolutely. is crazy. It's that is so before. insane to me that yeah. people would do that. But uh, but yes, I. I'm sure it's a rule because it's been broken. Right. But yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah I, I, as a listing agent, when I have a listing, I always go, I have a folder. Mm -hmm. I run price analysis on all my listings. Of mm -hmm. course, I don't just pick numbers out, yeah. of, out of hats. <laughs> you know, I, I yeah. actually have a calculation. Yeah. So I go, I provide that. I provide features of the home. Um, if there's any details that may affect value, I do. Mm -hmm. I put it all in a folder. I just, you know, I go hand it to the appraiser and stay out of their way. Yep. I don't try to have a conversation or, you know, yep, anything. Absolutely. Yep. I know that, you know, I, I never want to be accused of doing something I'm not supposed to do, but I make sure that they have all the necessary information that may be required. Right. Um, right. You know, it may it may have an effect. They might look at all of my information and say this doesn't even matter. Right. Um, but at least they have it so they can make their own determination on what it means. Yeah. And when you do provide it, it could be that extra five to ten thousand dollars that are like oh i didn't realize this and you know these are very much improved features you know as long as you haven't over improved for the neighborhood then yeah you that those type of that knowledge for the appraiser may absolutely do what it takes to get that extra five or ten thousand dollars yeah yeah and sometimes warrant simple warranties like having a new roof that has has a has a warranty on it new or, roofs are big yeah, absolutely. Or, new know, ac new ac yeah. they might they don't know when they walk yeah. in the house how old it is you yeah. know so so i do i feel like that is important to mm -hmm. provide and it's doing our job and um, when representing the seller, that's doing our job to our seller Absolutely. of um, making sure that, that everything that they've done is, mm -hmm. is at least acknowledged. Right. Doesn't mean it's going to affect value. That's up to the appraiser, but at least it's acknowledged. Mm -hmm. um, what happens if the appraiser comes in over, if the appraisal comes in over value? So we're back to this $400,000 house, but the appraisal came in at 420. What happens? Does the buyer have to raise their price? Absolutely not. That's good news for the buyer. Excellent negotiating. Um, and uh, no. And in fact, uh, we often say is it's really between the buyer and the lender, you know, and, and, the, and their buyer's agent that the value came in over. Uh, but no, um, they don't have to raise their price, but also they don't really get any immediate benefit from it. So it's not like it changes their loan to value. You know, if they were putting down 5%, they're like, oh, I automatically have an extra 20%. You know, do I, do I need to now come in with my 5%? Your loan to value is based on the purchase price and the, at the 
um, at purchase price value of the appraisal. You still need to bring in your 5%. You can't immediately cash out or anything. Um, <laughs> so it's real, it's basically just good news for you. You have instant equity in the property. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. And, and it is a good feeling to yeah. know that you're Absolutely. moving into a house that you're not upside down day yeah. one. Yeah. And, uh, and and that's great. It's not common, yep. but it happens. We, we've, we've seen it. it happen a lot yep. lately. Recently, um, yep. recently yeah. yeah. So um, it's, it's not common. Um, it is a great thing when it happens. And it's uh, the, the good news is it doesn't affect Effect, um, it doesn't affect your price. I always have um, buyers call when I say, oh, your appraisal came over and, you know, I'm, I'm excited. And they're like, wait, do I have to pay more? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that's not what that means. Yeah, so yeah. Um, that's good news. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, you know, we, we definitely, it's a better conversation than trying Absolutely. to negotiate it yeah. coming under. Right. Um, so we do like it when that happens. And again, if we could determine, I, I wish we could determine what is going to happen at an appraisal. There's been times that I've had appraisals where I thought it's slam dunk. I had a model match and, you know, whatever. And then there's something weird that the appraiser throws in there. And it's yeah. like, right, I, it, we can ballpark it, you right. know, of course, right. but we can never um, guarantee what that appraiser is going to say right. or what's going to happen during that appraisal. Well, it's the, it's an experienced agent, you know, and it's, uh, it's not just an agent that's been doing business, you know, for 10 years. It's an, it's an agent that's been, that's been doing business for 10 years because there's, yeah. there's a lot of agents that have been in business for 5, 10, 20 years and are doing a couple of deals you know, a, a year. Um, you're, you're doing excellent. And so you, you, you. with all the business you're doing every month, you, you know the experience and that's, and that's important. You know? Yeah, so. no, it is. It is yeah. at market conditions. I mean, there's overlays on appraisals all the time for market right. conditions, which will have their own adjustments. Yeah. So, yeah. um, it's, uh, it, it is definitely, I, I, I've seen them and we see them change, yeah. you know, with the market yep. appraisals change with the market right now. Appraisals yep. are coming in stronger than I've ever seen them come in. Yep. Absolutely. Um, so that's, uh, it's yeah, that's one of the actual ticks and in, in the appraisal, it, it, they talk about, um, stable market and declining market, which obviously was back in 2010 and then, uh, and then an improving market, which, uh, um, increasing improving market, which we're in now. And so, and yeah, that's how, that's how values increase is, you know, there has to be, you know, demand on the market, which there very much is right now. And so, um, so yeah, that's, that's one of the appraisal conditions is improving market. Okay, great. And then, um, just as a quick note before we, um, before we wrap this up, I'm yep. going to ask you to pull out your crystal ball for a second. Yes. How do you think we're doing with this market? I hear so many things and I, this is a, a curveball question, right? I hear so many things, um, from people right now. Some, there's one side that's like, no, we're headed to a crash. You can't stay this way. There's another side that says we're going to be like this for at least a couple of years. There is no sign of actual decline, so I don't see it going anywhere. No, no. This this type of pressure will be on the market for two to three years easily. I think so um, too. And uh, lots of factors. It maybe even a whole other segment, but um, baby boomer retirees retiring by the thousands a day. And they want to come to markets, you know, that are, you know, no state income tax and great weather. And, you know, when you have 40 million people just to our west, you know, in California that's retiring and Vegas is on sale for them. Um, uh, obviously, what's going on, there's a lot of money being flooded in the market. And so now uh, there's hedge funds that are buying real estate, you know, by the hundreds. And so this market is here to stay for, for a, a while. I think right. so. And, right. and I, I, the way I feel about it is... Even if there were a slowdown or even if we did start to soften up a little bit, there's so many buyers still on the sidelines that still haven't been able to get homes because right. of all the competition right. that are still going to be buying for quite some time. Yep. So I, uh, I I just don't, I don't see it going anywhere anytime soon. Um, I know it's wishful thinking for some of you guys out there and I get well, it. During, but... <laughs> during the pandemic, it was, it slowed down for what, a month and a half, two months, yeah. and then it was just... It, it took off. So uh, if that didn't slow down the Las Vegas market, you know, and and, uh, and again, it's really just, you know, it's a lot of it's being driven by our 40 million neighbors to our west is that they're, they like, they like to retire in Nevada. So yeah, yeah. no, it's, it, it's a lot more cost effective yep. here. Yep. And uh, let's keep it the same. <laughs> let's keep it the same out there. We do not want a state tax in Nevada. Right. So Absolutely. Um, there, yeah. you know, there's definitely, um, you know, it, it is, it's a lot uh, more affordable place to live and it's great. It gets 120 in the summer, but if you can hang through that, Absolutely. you'll be all right. Yep. 
Yeah. So, all right. Well, thank you for joining us today on Realty Check. I hope you guys enjoyed today's content on the show, and I hope you continue watching our show throughout the series. Um, next week, we're going to talk about what happens uh, the day you get your keys, that closing table, the final um, final closing paperwork, and what all happens there. We're going to have an escrow officer here to talk to us about that. And uh, in the, our, our series, as we wrap up the series, we'll be leading over into a new one. So if you're enjoying us, subscribe to us, uh, share it with your friends, write us a review. Thank you so much for keeping tuned.